first time I saw it was probably in high school. You know, it's just one of those images that you never forget. It gets seared into your memory. Peter's known principally to us through the famous photograph, mostly known as the scourged back. The photograph, which was printed on a new technology at the time, it's sort of like a postcard, kind of took off with a special issue of Harper's Monthly. Accompanying that image was a story about Peter escaping from slavery in Mississippi, covering himself in onions to hide from the bloodhounds that had been set on his path, being captured by the Confederate Army and then escaping capture from them. The kind of escape that Peter had to undertake was incredibly difficult. The landscape itself was like a prison. To escape then means you've got to brave the swamp with its storms, malaria, dangerous animals and snakes. It makes it almost impossible to escape. He makes his way to the contraband camp. He's taken immediately to the medical examiner, and that's where the scourged back is revealed. The image was able to circulate like wildfire all throughout mostly the Northeast, but the broader American society. You see it in postcards being sold on the streets of New York. You see it for sale through abolitionist subscriptions. Here is, for most people, incontrovertible evidence of the barbarity that slavery necessitates, of what it demands to reduce a human being to that level of acquiescence and exploitation. This image was able to state plainly for all the world to see that slavery cannot endure without barbarity. That is its currency. It requires that in order to function. Much of what we know about the story of Peter comes from Harper's Magazine, but the other evidence we have seems to complicate that, that this may have been amalgamation by the writer of a bunch of different stories that he'd learned from covering slavery, from covering the war. We have the most famous image of American slavery on one hand, and we know next to nothing about him on the other hand, not even his real name. That in a nutshell is the historical problem with understanding American slavery. The kinds of records, the kinds of archives we use to write the lives of other people in this society just simply don't exist to the same degree for enslaved people. That makes it very, very hard to tell the story of enslaved people in any great detail. So we have to try to read against the grain and work our way through this paucity of evidence to try to tell a fuller life story of enslaved people. And that story in Harper's is still crucial because it's a composite of what we have come to learn about the greatest rebellion against slavery in American history, which is the mass defection of slaves from the plantations during the Civil War and the joining of the Union Army. That image was able to achieve a sense of reality for many people who continue to be skeptical about the testimonies of ex-slaves. In a sense, you could think of it as one of the first viral images, remaking the sensibilities of Americans in relation to the cruelty of slavery. When Peter makes it to the Union lines, he's immediately impressed into the Union army. He knows another kind of unfreedom right away. Freedom isn't gonna be straightforward. Despite all the heroism, despite the sacrifice that's gone into getting this far, the journey is not over. That, I think, is a compelling task of a film like Emancipation. It is about slavery, and it's about more than slavery. It's about the human condition. This teaches us something about what it means to be human, even now. <laughs>